Well, see if you can make it. You think I can fit? <laughs> <laughs> what if I get stuck in here? Welcome back to the WT Cold Girls channel. <laughs> it's a little cold today. It's like 50 degrees. Um, luckily, when I shot the video, it was still nice 70 degrees. Whew. Let's go. I don't know if this is helping or hurting. Uh, I've broken two in a row. Um, the other ones are spinning. <sighs> I can try doing it by hand, but I don't think the results are going to be any prettier. I would rather just bounce right off. definitely doesn't care about all of the crazy awful sounds uh, she was sitting behind me when the grinder was going off fortunately she's being smart and staying behind me and not in front of me and she doesn't care about the ratchet sound either yes we got farm dog through and through huh all right we just lost power again today and had a massive uh, wind slash rainstorm roll through so now I'm finally able to cut these things off and uh, it's just nothing's really been cooperating. Oh yeah, you like my safety glasses? Um, they're not really that safe, but they're better than say um, my other safety glasses because these will fall right off my face and they'll be useless to me. All right, so traditional safety glasses, the sparks will actually fly behind these. Um, the only block maybe 50% of what potentially can land in your eye and the downside is you don't blink because you think you're fine, so you just don't. No. It's just a grinder. But you're gonna have to go. I'm Gary. She likes eating bugs.
don't eat them out there. Hey, you know, if you take all my tractor parts, I'm not gonna be able to put this back together. D did you seriously, did you seriously just walk off with that in your mouth? No, oh, it's right here. Sucker. Seriously, what? That is not even gonna taste good. You coming back for round two? <laughs> what if I get stuck in here? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can make this. My goal was to get... guys so I had a quick revelation on this um, a lot of this stuff I kind of do off camera because it's just picking at it Whew. so I wanted to check something really quick I, let's check it together I was reading through the manual trying to figure out what parts I needed to order I had kind of a good idea watch this all right so the manual is like <laughs> I just love reading manuals. You know, you gotta love instructions. So the manual starts out with saying, Haybine must be assembled exactly like as follows. And so it lists out everything that you need to do. So the number one mistake that we made um, when we took some of these guards off last year is that the sickle bar right down there has to be in the machine while you are replacing those hold downs because they're actually supposed to line up right up tight against that. Um, another mistake. Oh, right here. So uh, this is the modified hold down that we had done. So on the actual sickle bar itself, 
there's a joint at the top that has, I mean, you can kind of see it from here. It's an extra little chunk of metal that sticks up over the top. Now this had never been on the hay barn before. It's supposed to be on the machine. However, we're having issues with the actual sickle bar was running into the side of this. Um, when John Deere looked it up, they said there was a specific part for it. I thought they said there was a specific part, but they didn't carry it and they didn't know if they could even order it. So we decided instead to buy a new one and just notch it out. And through trial and error, this is what we came up with. Not too bad. Uh, however, this is why we take things apart. Okay, if I had my GoPro, this would work a little bit easier, but that's another story. Anyway, uh, look at this. Well, dang, that uh, isn't correct. Look at that. I mean, this thing isn't just worn off. It's got a groove that's worn in it, and these things are wicked tough. You don't even want to know how long it took to notch this out with a high-powered um, drill bit. It, it was forever. Dang. Remember that spot on the sickle bar that I showed you where it was worn? Well, that's where it's hitting. So, so if we shine our camera back here, right there, you can see that wear spot. So I'm gonna look that part number up online and see what I can find. Okay, so bear with me. This is actually gonna be upside down because uh, that's in the way. So this would go like this, okay? Oops, like this. So this was supposed to stop right in front of this. You can see it's, it's not gonna fit. Um, and if you have it up too high, it still isn't gonna fit. Yeah, you can see that, that silver spot right there, even though my camera's blurry. So I think this problem was that this was already on and it should have been put on after the sickle bar and uh, because it was already tightened down pretty tight, uh, this didn't have anywhere to go. So if this is pushing like this, it's going to cause some breakage right there, which would be right about where this was. So that's going to be my guess is that this guy probably caused the breakage. Um, and obviously it broke here because of the bad weld from John Deere's factory. And then this was a secondary crack that was developing just from this. That's going to be my guess. Um, I'm going to guess that that's probably why it was also, um, doing a roundabout pattern. But one more thing I want to show you guys is that, uh, the pin that goes on the top of the Pittman arm right there. I didn't have it torqued to 160 pounds of pressure. Um, I just put it on as tight as I could get it. Now if you get a breaker bar or something to that degree, you can get it on tighter. The Pittman arm, so you can see right now, it, it's pretty much in the furthest line of travel for over here on the side. See how it, it kind of angles downward right here? Now, if I were to rotate the PTO and shift this over this way, then it's gonna be the opposite. This side is going to be down low, and then this side right down here is going to be almost touching right here. So this arm seems to have kind of a an art movement like this, very slightly. I'm not sure if that's normal. I'm gonna see if I can find something online about the motion of travel for this guy. It doesn't make much sense as to why he would be perfectly arced because it is pretty much a perfect arc. Um, it's exactly the same on this side as it is on this side if you were to measure the two, meaning like this end is nearly touching the top right here. And if you cycle them this way, then this end is nearly touching this and this end has the gap. This is my blurry picture of it. Um, yeah, so that's what he looks like. And I'm assuming to change them, you gotta remove that castle nut right here. You know, when I shoot video, I keep forgetting about the door behind me, and it's probably making this whole video dark. I'll <laughs> uh, be real quick. I wanted, wanted to try to go over some of these parts. 
Uh, so when I was researching this, uh, I only have one extra of this type. So I only need to order, excuse me, I only need to order one of these. I think I'll actually order a couple of these just so I have extras on hand. Some of these might be a little bit dull. Some of these are still pretty sharp. So anything that feels somewhat dull, I'm gonna go ahead and order new ones. Uh, these are fine. These are fine. I don't know if this is an extra high hold down or a normal hold down. What do you think? Oh, actually, I might be able to tell by looking at the part number. I'll have to check online on the part number. Anyway, these are about 10 bucks online. I looked around a lot of different places and that's about what I'm seeing. Um, some of you guys suggested plow bolts and I'm not sure what the difference is. Uh, maybe it has a flat rounded head. Um, but I need something with a square interior. Gosh, this camera sucks. Okay, see so yeah, a square. Yeah, so John Deere sells these for like 75 cents a piece. Online you can get them for 30, which is a much better buy considering how I go through them. What, hey, what did you just take? What do you have? What did you, what, you, what you eat in? What you eat in? Come here. Don't eat that. I don't know what you have, but. What you eat in? Anyway, um, so actually, it's supposed to have lock washers for the very top of these, actually. Goes like this. So the top one up here is supposed to be a lock washer, and then this one goes on right here. These are supposed to be torques to, oh shoot, I forget what it is, but it's in the manual what the torque setting for this is. And then you put one of these on, and then a lock washer right here. Now I got to thinking about your suggestion. It is chaos right now. So a lot of you guys had suggested to weld these on to the bottom. And at first I thought this seemed a little ridiculous. I mean, an extreme effort to get them off. But then I got to thinking, you know, if I ever have to remove these again, part of the reason they're rounding is because as soon as you start to loosen this thing, guess what it does? It falls. And when it falls, that's when it starts rounding off the edges. So of course you're gonna have to cut it off. That's just how it is. Um, I did try holding them in place while backing them out and that didn't work. So welding them, let me show you. Actually, this is pretty genius. So obviously, if you were to weld this in here, like so, uh, he's not gonna go anywhere, is he? And I thought, well, that's terrible because you need to be able to remove him. Actually, you don't. So what I think I'm gonna do is after I put all these on and tighten them down, I'm gonna go through and weld them. Every single one is just gonna get welded onto the bottom uh, bracket. See, this is one of the newer bolts right here. So by welding them, it's going to have a permanently attached uh, permanently attached nut right there. And then put anti-seize on the edges, and it should be good to go. You're right. I mean, doesn't that sound like a good idea? Uh, as far as these, I can only get them in grade 5. And that's all I've been able to find online is grade 5, zinc coated. Uh, so put your thoughts down below on that. But anyway... I thought that was a pretty cool idea that you guys had suggested and uh, putting it to good use. Okay, so the biggest problem I'm having right now is these. Uh, these are the shims or wear plates. Supposedly they're two different things, but I can't find these at all online, only these. And these are completely different than this. This obviously covers four, this covers two. So I'm trying to figure that out, but John Deere sells these for I think $4 a piece and I can get them online for $2 a piece. So it's still a better buy. John Deere was selling these for like $18 a piece. And I did find something online that was just a two hole bracket like this. So maybe that would work. And I think that was like maybe a dollar fifty. But I mean, you can tell that these definitely need to be replaced. <sighs> okay, next price list, Pitman Arm. You guys had suggested a new Pitman Arm. And luckily, I can buy them online for about $100. I think it's just a couple bucks over $100. You also suggested a wobble box. 
At the Wobble Box, you're looking at over a thousand dollars for a refurbished unit. Not even a new, a refurbished one. Yeah, considering the whole thing costs us about three to, I think thirty-five hundred dollars. I'm not gonna drop a grand on a new Wobble Box. So we're just. I might go ahead and get the Pitman arm. I don't know. I guess, I mean, a hundred bucks. But the sickle bar is the harder part. Um, I haven't been able to find any sickle bar. Did you just run off with that? Hey, 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 what's this? You can't run off my nuts. What am I gonna do? Don't touch. Uh, anyway, I can replace the Pitman arm. I'm just going to get this together as much as possible, get it put together correctly, and all the worn out parts, at least in the cutter area, put back on, and then probably put it up for sale next spring and get a disc spine. Now some of you guys say that you like sickle mowers better than disc spine. All we cut is grass, that's it. No alfalfa, no clover, nothing else. Um, another thought Aircad was getting Oh, she was called a disc mower where it doesn't have the conditioners in the back, but it just has the disc drums. I don't know. Has anybody tried those? What are your thoughts? Uh, so for the sickle bar, I can't find any decently priced new ones online. And to make matters worse, they don't show pictures of them. Now, I'm not going to buy something if I can't see a picture of it because I want to make sure that's exactly what I'm trying to buy. Right? I mean, $300. I don't want to just buy it blindly. So I might just see if I can order one through John Deere. I know. Now, years ago, I did look online, and I did find some for like 200 bucks, but I don't know what happened with that. Maybe they're made in China. Yeah, that's probably what happens. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, if most John Deere parts are made in China, can I even get parts for my hay buying? I don't know. Guess we'll find out. Maybe, just maybe, we'll get uh, some parts. But if not, then we'll go through and we'll clean this thing up because that's my other pet peeve is the rust factor. So we'll go through and we'll clean all of this up, scrape all the crap out of everything, get it polished, get it looking great so it can be ready to go back together soon. Bye.